All right, so I figured I would do a series uh, really highlighting kind of species profiles within uh, Pythonidae. And um, I figured I would start off the bat with uh, really a, a really favorite species of mine, which is the Sabu Python. So here is a little Sabu. Now there's several reasons that I find these pythons like really cool. Um, so the least of which is that they were discovered really not that long ago. Um, they were discovered in 1993, which is uh, just a year before I was born. So um, they've always kind of had a soft spot in, in my heart for, for that reason. Now the scientific name for these guys is Lyasis sabuensis. And uh, obviously because of that, they are uh, <laughs> related to a lot of the other Lyasis. In fact, these guys were at one point considered a uh, subspecies of uh, Maclots pythons, which at this point, I think uh, the, the debate is pretty well settled that these are a full uh, species from them, um, which kind of makes sense when you think of right off the bat, just, just the size differences alone. So the, uh, the max documented size for a Maclots python is uh, 2.7 meters versus these guys, it's like 1.6 meters, which is quite a big difference. Now, these guys go through what is called an ontogenetic color change, which means as they get older, they, they kind of change in color. Um, and so when this uh, animal was born, it was essentially pretty much patternless and red colored. And now it's starting to get more of these kind of spots and freckles that uh, this species is really kind of well known for. In terms of relatedness to other pythons, uh, there was a python phylogeny paper put out not too long ago and put these guys uh, sharing a common ancestor with the Macalots python uh, probably about 2 million years ago. And uh, the next closest related thing would be the um, Australian water pythons, Lyasis fuscus, um, which it shared a common ancestor with about four million years ago. So to kind of put that in reference of uh, other pythons, um, the Sumatran short tail python and the Borneo python shared an ancestor about two million years ago. So about the same as between uh, Maclots and Sabus. And um, Borneo pythons and red blood pythons share uh, a common ancestor about four million years ago, which is about the difference between these guys and the uh, water pythons. So that kind of gives you gives you a, a degree of relatability um, between these pythons. Now to, again, put that in perspective, to go back to a common ancestor these guys had with ball pythons, you'd have to go back about 40 million years. So uh, this is one of my uh, adult Sabu pythons. And so you can kind of see just, just how much they do change in coloration. Um, now, as the name might suggest, uh, these guys are only found on the island of Sabu, uh, which unlike the closely related Maclots python, uh, which has a large range around uh, Timor and really surrounding islands. Um, these guys are also called white-eyed pythons, which is not uh, <laughs> shocking considering their nice white eyes. Now, these guys are really awesome. Uh, they're, they're exceptionally hardy. They're very easy to care for. They have generally pretty even temperaments. Um, I would say their care is a lot, uh, pretty similar to a, a carpet python maybe, uh, although not as semi-arboreal. They lay clutches of around maybe 10 eggs or so. Um, and while there's no kind of formal color mutations, there is a silver phase, which uh, uh, maybe this guy, I don't think he's a silver phase, but, but some people might be tempted to describe him as such. Um, yeah, they're, they're uh, pretty easily bred in captivity, um, although they are pretty hard to find in recent years. In fact, um, since I got these guys, which was in 2015, uh, the price has gone up over fivefold. So um, yeah, the hardest part about these guys is, is actually finding them lately. <laughs> but um, aside from that, they're really, really kind of really awesome captives and uh, with a, a lot of variation in terms of color. So here is another uh, adult Sabu python. This female is in shed, um, but she has a much darker appearance and, and some of them, uh, especially the females, can get just kind of jet black as adults or, or very, <laughs> very close to it, um, very dark. But this female actually has a fair bit of coloration still and uh, retained a fair bit of red coloration. You can kind of see it in the tail especially, um, which is more obvious when she's not in shed. But um, yeah, it just goes to show that, that there's uh, some range in, in phenotypic expression uh, in these guys and um, yeah they're, they're really a pretty enjoyable snake. Now the only other thing that is uh, pretty neat about them is their um, really big head scales which is nowhere near as drastic as some other species but um, you can still see it they're, they're pretty big pretty big thick head scales. 